Welcome back to Coworking with Iris. I'm your host, Iris Cavanaugh, and it's still Coworking Week, so I'm still talking about connection, <laughs> one of my favorite topics. And I wanted to talk today a little bit about um, the ways that you can build a connected community. And so I have three tips for you to build your community into a very connected and high touch, high engaged experience for your members and for yourself and your community managers if you've got them. Um, and I often get got asked by clients and or their staff, how do I make my members connect more? How do I get my members to interact more? How do I get my members to be more outgoing or more engaged in my community? And what I always come back to, and this is just my own style, but what I always come back to is, if you want your members to connect, then you have to model that connection. And so I wanna show you three ways that you can do that today. So number three is transparent communication. And I know that sounds crazy, but why is transparent communication gonna help my members become more engaged with my community? Well, the truth is, is that um, this is the only business model in the world that I can think of where we're literally co-creating our business alongside our members. I know that there's software out there that gets released in iterative phases and we give feedback and they make updates, but it's not the same thing as building a business while your customers are in the house um, and sometimes even helping you build your business, whether it be through tours or you know, um, sitting on the phone for you if you're running out for a lunch break, or just in general, um, helping keep the space secure when you're not there. If you're, if you're open 24 seven and your members are the ones there overnight or you know, in the evenings or in the mornings when you're not in the space, you're relying on them to help keep your space secure. So transparent communication is really important because it sets up a system of trust. It allows your members to know that you've got their back. They're paying you money every month to be in your space. And if you operate your business in a, in a transparent way, it gives them the opportunity to make the decisions that they need to make in their lives. So let's take an example. <clears throat> so my co-working space um, recently underwent some construction. Um, we had a kitchen that got remodeled, yay. <laughs> it was a great, a great uh, outcome. The experience wasn't great. And um, the way that things worked was we were supposed to have um, a couple of weeks, maybe a month at most of this remodel. After all, it was just the kitchen. Um, and instead it turned into, I think, maybe a four month process. So my community managers did a great job of managing this process. They let people know ahead of time through email, through messages on the whiteboards that are available to you the minute you walk in the door that you see, through one-to-one -one conversations, through community announcements at happy hours, and uh, posters all over the space, of course, letting us know that the kitchen was gonna be remodeled, letting us know when the remodel schedule came in, then when the uh, remodel started, there was a whole plan for how we were gonna deal with a temporary kitchen. Then as the remodel progressed and continued to be um, a time suck, uh, we got regular updates and regular notifications. Was it a bummer? Was it loud? Was it disruptive to the members' lives and to their work life? And was it really difficult to live without a kitchen for four months? All answers are yes. Yes, it was a difficult period for us. But because our community managers did such a great job of informing us ahead of time of what was coming, of informing us that things were not perfect, that they were doing everything that they could to manage it, but that they also had their hands tied, we were able to adjust our needs and our expectations as members and as people running our own businesses, we were able to make sure that our needs were being met um, even if we didn't have a kitchen to work out of. So again, uh, you know, transparent communication provides your members with a sense of safety. It allows them to know what's happening in their world and it allows them to make those business decisions that they might need to make that, um, that you know, your business is affecting their business and it builds a sense of trust because they know that they can count on you. Even when things are tough for you, you're gonna make sure you got your members back. And the tip to help create a connected community number two is to be interesting. <laughs> 
what do I mean by being interesting? Well, your members are really interesting people, right? Like they're fascinating. They have these lives that they live. They have these jobs that they do. They, um, they're just making great things happen in the world. Um, and you're an interesting person too, chances are. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be doing this co-working thing. So what do I mean by interesting? Well, take your interests that are outside, your outside interests, and use those to create connection opportunities within your space. Um, when you have these interests, they will generally be things that you will feel passionate about. And that passion translates for your members into um, excitement around an activity. So for instance, I will use myself as an example here. When I first discovered CrossFit, um, I went to my local CrossFit gym owner and I said, hey, I would love to get some of my members involved. I'm pretty sure I have some members who would like to be here too. Would you be willing to come in and we've got this giant conference room. Could you lead a wad, which is workout of the day in CrossFit language? Could you lead a wad for our members over lunchtime and just do a lunch and learn explanation of what CrossFit is? Bring in some kettlebells and put us to the test and let's see what we can do. And they did, they came in, they spent an hour at lunch and guess what? We had 13 members working out of their gym within the next six months. So 13 of us would go to this gym together and work out. Other things that I've done are creating um, races, uh, getaway style races. Um, and we once had three spaces participate together in a, an overnight race where we all went and stayed in a house together. We raced through wine country and we had after events. And you know, there was the four month training period lead up. That was so much fun. We even had team names, team names and team shirts. And so you can imagine with both of these activities, how connected the people felt both to me and to the, the human that I am, because I, I showed that I had interests. I showed that I was a real life person. I wasn't just this person who sat behind a desk or solved their printer problems. Um, and then how they connected with each other. From those relationships at that CrossFit gym came businesses. And from those relationships <laughs> at the, that overnight um, running event came relationships. And I'm talking about romance here. So, you know, those are those, are, um, those opportunities that, um, that we have when we bring our interests into our work in co-working, they really lead to additional opportunities for connection between our members, between us, and it just feels good too. It feels good to like know that you can talk about your personal life in, if you want to at work and that that's actually encouraged. And then um, connecting your members tip number one, and what I would say is literally one of the most important things you can do when you run a co-working space is to be vulnerable. Oh my God, what do I mean by be vulnerable? <laughs> well, um, just like being interesting, I mean show up as yourself. We all have up days, we all have down days. Um, we all experience life and our members are experiencing life. And when you can be real about what's going on for you with your members, you're modeling for them being real about what's going on for them and you're modeling being real within the community about what's going on with the community. So I'm not saying that you have to air your dirty laundry in public. Um, I'm not saying that you need to be a drama queen, but there are ways to show up and be vulnerable that can allow somebody to feel a deeper sense of connection to you and therefore that connection fosters more connection within the community. A couple of ways that I can think of are, um, and I'll just use myself as a personal example here again. Uh, so if you know me, you know that in the past year I lost my mom and um, I went through a really amazing process where I had the opportunity to just drop my life. Actually, I took the opportunity to just drop my life, put it aside and go to my mom. And um, I really didn't know it was coming. I, I didn't work. I didn't make hardly any money. Um, 
I ran up there, I was in a no cell service zone, so I wasn't really even able to take care of my, my existing client base. I left my kids behind, I left all the animals in my life and, that live with me, which was a lot, behind. And I just, I, I went there and I stayed there for three and a half months. And when I came back, I emerged back into, you know, the election and a stack of mail that literally was almost as tall as me. I mean, it was a crazy stack of mail and um, my house was a disaster and I had moved my daughter out kind of last minute um, to go to New York and then like threw everything in a room. And so I came back to this huge mess that I had to deal with uh, in my life. And so when I came back to my co-working community, what what people asked me, like, Iris, I haven't seen you around in a while. What's been going on? Where have you been? And I was real, you know? I said, you know, um, yeah, I just had this really intense experience. I just lost my mom, and I just had the opportunity to care for my mom through the end of her life, and it was, you know, really challenging and hard and really healing all at the same time. And I let myself in those moments just feel 100% what I was feeling in that moment, whatever it was. And the way that people responded, um, it was so magic and so beautiful and exactly what I needed in those moments, they responded to me in a real way. And then they shared about themselves. And that's the magic of vulnerability, is when I share with you something about myself and it touches you inside, it means you're gonna share something about yourself and we've just created another little bit of connection, another connection spark. And you can also do so with happy things. You know, um, when I became pregnant with my son and um, we finally, my partner and I finally decided that we could share the news, it was this big celebration and my community was so excited and I had three baby showers. Oh my God. And you know, I could have hidden that and been pretended let, like life was going on as normal. And then eventually as I got bigger and bigger, kind of been like, yeah, I'm gonna have a baby. But instead I was like, yay, we're bringing a co-working baby to the world. I'm just making members left and right here. You know, I kind of made it light and fun. And my members responded with just this beautiful, um, giving energy towards me and what also ended up happening was that we had a lot more members interacting with the community around their own babies that were coming or around their own children and so it really felt more holistic and nourishing as a community because we really welcomed the idea that we were all family people or I mean a lot of us were family people you know but that we were all people outside of these four walls of work so, as you move through your day in your co-working space, what is, what one of these tricks do you think you'll try for helping your community become more connected? I'd love it if you'd give me a comment down below, and it would be awesome if you would give me a thumbs up and tell me if you like this content, or a thumbs down. The more I produce these videos um, and the more I hear from you, the more I can know what kind of content you're looking for. So have a wonderful rest of your co-working week. And if you're watching this after co-working week, just have a wonderful life. Keep doing what you're doing and we'll talk again soon.